wale ne uru to serikali bende odwar kaka nyalo tiyo gi bunde ka timo bunde ero kamano uru let me just translate this is mama dorothy oguta the mother of edwin owino who was shot by the police here in bondo she's spoken in luo and she said that edwin was shot a day after the mandamano he was not even part of the protesters he was just here in bondo trying to go to his house and the police met him shot him in his knee and when he landed down then they landed on him with rungus they dislocated his left shoulder they broke his left leg and they bruised him immensely on his head and his back she says she's blaming the police because the police are supposed to protect not to maim kill and harm she says that no compensation will bring back her son but she's demanding for compensation especially for the families who are bereaved and we will speak about that later she maintains that she is not intimidated although she's lost even if the police come with all their guns and everything else we must fight for what is right ultimately she says in the event the persons to be blamed for the death of edwin and all these bereaved families are the police led by the inspector general thank you very much mama dorothy bedgikwe onge watch mosuru jakom mosuru jakom eko dia now because she's talked about what happened i want to call the first person who will put us in the picture of what really happened the inspector general says we were hiring bodies to parade them but even these ones now we've hired to parade i want to call the honorable opio wandai minority leader to put us in the proper picture of how it is and let me say this very very briefly that what we are talking about here is a real situation of real deaths of real kenyans in the hands of the kenyan police without any shade of doubt without any shade of doubt and i want to say this that the inspector general of police Mr. Jafet Komi cannot cannot in broad daylight tell Kenyans that is going to use the implements the equipment the tools that Kenyans have bought through their taxes to harm Kenyans again that it was never the intention of the drafters of our constitution indeed it was never the intention of intention of kenyans when they adopted the 2010 constitution that the national police service would be transformed into a tool to not only oppress the citizens but to kill them secondly we want the whole world to know that we are putting together a very strong case and we shall be demonstrating that these acts of aggression by the national police service agents and their collaborators were planned and that there was a clear chain of command and that they were targeted at specific groups especially the luo ethnic group we are going to demonstrate that and more importantly we want to caution the international criminal court that on the kenyan situation it is not just enough for the icc prosecutor karim khan 
to recuse himself from the Kenyan situation. What we want is an assurance from the presidency of the ICC that the ICC is going to remain impartial. It's going to remain impartial on the matter of the Kenyan situation from the beginning to the end. As I conclude, I want to read the names of Kenyans, very, very brave Kenyans, who have been killed by police bullets during these mandamanos. And some of them were buried last weekend, some of them were buried this weekend, and others shall be buried later on. And these are Kenyans from all corners of the country. Even, if, even though the, a, a great majority of them are from here. So allow me to read these names, and especially as a way of also <laughs> commiserating with their families. And very, very quickly, so if you allow me, a uh, one uh, Moses Otieno Were, Jamaso Mwenge Gigi Njogo and Police and Unigo. Kuruchi Kuri Yitu. Moses Otieno Were from Ugenya. Douglas Kalasinga Lugari. George Morgan. Ikolomani. John Okoth. Alego Usonga. Unego. Robert Ouko Diambo. Suna East. John Benjamin Imbi. Luanda. John Ochego Chieng, Ogunja. Austin Ouma Steve, Ogunja. Elio Tieno, Bondo. Harris Ochieng, Game. Fanuel Ochieng, Game. David Omondi, Game. Moses Onyango, Kendubei, Karachuanyo. Stephen Okinyi Ochieng, Suna West. Brian Oniango, Luanda. William Amulele, Kisumu West. Eliam Michael Oduor, Ugenya. Richard Mutuku, Baringo Central. Jeremiah Mwengi, Mwingi South. Solomon Bobobat, Nyakach. Rogers Omondi, Rangwe, Homa Bay County. Jack Ogana Nyangwala, Bondo. Venesta Odiambo, Migori Uriri. Regan Otieno, Suna East Migori. Frederick Omonyo, Suna East Migori. Edwin Owino Omondi, Rarieda, Siaya. David Agan, Game. Sylvester Owino, Game. Walter Odoyo Awonda, Kisumu Central. David Ocheng Ouma Ragen, Nyando. Eric Omondi Abok, Kisumu Central. Frank Opio Odiambo, Seme. Bernard Ocheng Otana, Rongo. Peter Wanjala, Kitale. Benson Otieno Ouma, Suna East. I can go on and on and on. Some of these Kenyans have already been buried. A number of them, we are still compiling their records. We, ex we estimate that by the end of this exercise, we shall have lost not less than 60 Kenyans. And these are real Kenyans with real names, with real places of abode. Thank you, the Honorable Opio and I. We want to challenge the Inspector General Komi. Tell us which of those names read by Opio and I who was not killed by the police, who died of other causes and was hired to be included there. 
we challenge you to tell us which is that body that we hired to be paraded. You have charge of the investigations. Come and arrest us and charge us and tell us who we falsely paraded. And what we are saying here, it is not just us. It is not just our principles. Amnesty International has investigated and confirmed. The Independent Medical Legal Unit has confirmed. The Law Society of Kenya has confirmed. The Kenya Human Rights Commission has confirmed. Mr. Kome, the people lying in those coffins are just not those people. What you see in those coffins are dreams of young children who've lost their parents. What you see in those coffins are hopes of young widows who've lost their husbands. What you see in those coffins are dreams of mothers who own nothing in this world except the children that they sired. And Mr. Kome, Mr. Kome, oh come, cause oh keep come, oh come, cause oh keep oh come. Mr. Kome, you once said you are being pursued because you are a man from Meru. I want to tell you that in Lua land, we respect and value our dead. We would never hire dead people for other purposes to pretend because we value the dead and we love the dead. Mr. Komen, you come, koso ki come. Mr. Komen, you come, koso ki come. Mr. Komen, you just must resign. You must resign, Mr. Komen. Because you've disrespected us as a community. You've shown that you are so insensitive. Yani kome ni dhiro wa koso ki dhiro wa. Toki dhiri ya waldo ki koni enough is enough. Mr. Kome, as a community, we are saying enough is enough. And Kome, marchia dango. And Kome, me pia lo sadi. I pia lo sadi ya dia pia le. Kome, ni pia lo sadi, mando wa pia le. Kome, I want to tell you, you are stupid. You are stupid. You are stupid. Cheers. Hello? Hello? Let me now call the Honorable Sam Atandi. Atan Meli. Alego Usonga. Aya. Aya. Jodalama Untie. Barbara Ilamolo Dinga and the leadership of Azimio present, the family of the bereaved, and our church. I want to be very brief. Article 245 of our constitution outlines the character and the responsibilities of the Inspector General of Police. In that article, the character of IG is explained. That person is supposed to act independently and should not be guided by anybody. But the Inspector General of Police we have today acts like an agent of the UDA party. He is not the is not the man who is supposed to act in that capacity as the IG of Kenya. In the recent past, Kome has said that we hired corpses, that the police did not kill anybody. He has also said that our people that the, that the Zimio coalition was targeting him because he's a Meru. What I want to say is this: that in my view, this guy is mad. He's not normal. This guy should be taken to Madare for mental assessment. Because we cannot have a mad person presiding over our police force. That is not allowed. Therefore, we want to urge that this guy be taken to Madare so that he can be sorted out. Secondly, secondly, many of our people have died. And this is not the first time. In 207... Many of our people were killed. In 2013, the same. In 2017, the same. Now in 2022, again 2023. 
I want to say that this is enough. That the price for killing a luo must now be very expensive. It is not going to be normal for luos to be killed like hens. I said in parliament that what happened from the list that, that Wandai has read, 90% of those people were killed at luos. That's why I said in parliament that what has happened in this country to us is genocide. And I maintain that this is genocide because it is something which was, was organized by this regime to exterminate the sons and daughters of our community. And we have said that this is going to be the end of this practice. And the life of a Luo is going to be very expensive. Achunka Wachoni, the blood of the dead is on the hands of the government. The blood of the dead is in the hands of the government. They have killed our young people. And the law of this land says that the government should protect the life of our people. The Bible also says that thou shall not kill. Therefore, I'm saying that to hell with the Guto government. The government is doing nothing. The government has no respect for human life. And we shall therefore go to the streets and continue to demonstrate. I thank you very much. I have a message to Baba and uh, our leadership in Azimio. When Amin Dada became president, taking over from Obote by force, the first statement he made in the streets of Kampala was that all the specialized police agencies were killing Ugandans and they had to be disbanded and he proceeded to disband them. I want you to review back and watch what happened. What happened is that a week after that, a shadowy gang of killers was created under Maliamungu and they went killing Ugandans for a whole, a whole decade in Uganda. When this regime came in, you were told that the specialized police units, the specialized police units, and we had very good ones under President Uhuru Kenyatta. You remember our units who cleared the terrorists in the city in no minute. You remember the, 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 the police squad which killed uh, the, 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 cleared the terrorists in Teresa, Garissa. And of course the others guarding our borders. They were called people who had been killing Kenyans extrajudicially and they were disbanded. But Baba, I tell you, we met the new inspector general, not inspector, DCI, Director Amin, and he told us they just wanted to remove those specialized officers. Those people were immediately replaced by a gang, a gang called Operation Support Unit something. This is a killer gang which is not protecting the Kenyan citizens as other police were doing, but is killing them. It is this gang moving around in civilian clothes. It is the gang moving around in vehicles without registered number plates. It is the gang doing all these crazy things we are doing. As we fight for justice for our people, we must begin the struggle to disband that unit. Otherwise, you are going to preside over the killing of very many Kenyans. In Siaya, particularly in Bondo here, the killing of the demonstrators was led by the deputy OCS. And this is something only myself can say. And he's the one who was in charge of this operation killing our people around Jodala Wawacho I need to tell you this because we are not in good times. We will say it to date. In Kisumu, when they were not able to kill the largest number of Luos they had predicted, they brought the killer gang from Nairobi. And we went to the hospital at Jaramogi Ogingo Ninja teaching and referral hospital. Your Excellencies, there are people still suffering bullet wounds and struggling for their lives there, with bullets lodged in very delicate parts of their body. What I noted in Kisumu is that our people were being aimed at, at three parts. The head, the left side of the chest, meaning the heart, and the genitals. So the statement was clear. It is either you had to die, or if you, you, are, you survived, 
you are to be sterilized, castrated. You can never be a human being and you cannot sire a child again in life. And that is why we, are, we, we said in parliament that this was planned genocide. This was planned genocide. And, and so there are measures we are going to take. As I end, I had uh, President Ruto indicate, in fact, congratulate the police. And I want to tell the president, you want to tell Ruto today that we are very happy. May the cries of these widows, may the cries of these orphans today confirm to you and the dead bodies in those coffins that the police did the good job you are doing. As Luos we remain in Kenya because Baba has taught us to be Kenyans and never to leave Kenya. Because we are not invitees into Kenya and we are not leaving Kenya. Kenya. My former good friend Kindiki ask where our people are. Wamepotea kwa nyazigani. Brother Kindiki, our people are in those coffins. But the ones who are not killed under your command and lawful command are waiting for the day Baba will call them to protest for rights because that is a constitutional right. So here they are. To a guy called Kome, Amolo let us agree. As leaders we cannot be crying with the people as if we don't have solutions. The constitution allows for the bringing of a petition to remove an inspector general of police, police who is rogue. And so we want the permission of these people who have lost, you know, dear relatives today, sons and daughters, husbands and, and, and parents, that we go and petition in your name the removal of a rogue called inspector general Koome somebody. And immediately that can be happened can happen. I want to testify that I witnessed two young brave Kenyans shot by the police. One in Kawangware called Kalasinga and one in Kangemi called David Omondi. And the police went and wanted to bribe these families that to accept that this young man died of pneumonia. <laughs> and we insisted that they must do a postmortem. And Omondi was shot seven times from the postmortem. Kalasinga was shot in cold blood and was killed. These are real people. Inspector Kome must resign. He does not deserve to be in that position. Yeah. Kenyans are not cockroaches. Kenyans are people, real people. And we have the right under our constitution to picket, to demonstrate, and to refuse some of the excesses that the government is doing. And we are not going to be cowed. We shall continue and we are going to fight for this brave hazard are lying there. That we Kenyans, we demand for justice for these families. We Kenyans, we demand for justice for any Kenya who has been maimed or who has been killed. On behalf of the people of Nairobi, where the most of this violence occurred, I send my sincere condolences to the families and to the people of Kenya. God bless you. And we have been blaming rule, I mean, uh, uh, Inspector General for killing. But I think it is not the Inspector General. It is Ruto. Actually, it is Ruto. When Ruto took over the reins of government in this country, he took the Bible and swore to protect the Constitution of Kenya. And once he put it down, Ruto is taking us back 40, 50 years back. And Ruto, we want to tell you that the Kenyans lost their lives fighting for the new constitution. 
Kenyans fought and very, very painfully uh, promulgated a new constitution in 2010. When you, you, Mr. President, you were against it. You were against it and you said no to the new constitution. But when you took power, you said you are going to protect it. And now you have shown by your actions that you are not ready to protect the new constitution. That, Ruto, you are reversing all the gains Kenyans have made over the years. And we want to tell you, Ruto, that we are not going to allow you because by killing people, well, by killing people, Ruto wants to cow you down. He wants you to be cowards. Ruto wants you to lose hope. Ruto wants you to be submissive. Ruto wants you to agree that he is the president so he can do whatever he likes. But we are warning you, Ruto, that these Kenyans, these Kenyans have fought for independence. They fought for the new constitution. They fought tirelessly to have democracy in this country. And you are not going to be allowed to re reintroduce one party rule. You are not going to be allowed to reintroduce dictatorship in this country. We shall never, never will Kenyans again accept a dictatorship in, on our land. So Ruto, be warned, be warned that Kenyans will not accept dictatorship again.